And welcome to a special in-studio edition of Our Town. We're in today with Grand Chief Mike DeLille. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, we're going to be discussing a little bit of everything today. There's a lot of politics happening here in Gahnawage always, but in the last couple of months it seems like we've been a very heated community. There's been some tumultuous times and of course there's a lot of things developing um, on the, in the larger scale politically in Canada and here in Quebec we have a lot of language issues going on and a lot I don't know more across Canada new legislation coming down from the um, <coughs> excuse me new legislation coming down from the Harper government things that are you know affecting First Nations across Canada and the US if you will but let's start here in Gahnawage um, education has been still at the forefront. It seems to have kind of come to a standstill with the Mohawk Council not really putting out as much releases and not being as forward as they were a couple of months ago. And of course, the other side, because there's two sides to every story. Um, where do we stand now on education? Has the Mohawk Council taken more of a back seat at the request of the community or where do we stand? Good question. Uh, I don't think we've taken a backseat to anything. We've been involved since September. Uh, environment and landscape has changed a couple of times since then, as I'm sure the community is well aware. Uh, we launched an action plan on behalf of the community through the Mohawk Council of Gunawage after the holidays to do the independent investigation that had been talked about for about a year now, maybe a little more, uh, into the firing of, of the former director. Uh, we're doing consultation in the community f to develop the, uh, I guess, what will determine uh, the outcome of the constitution and the constitutional discussions that have happened. We know that um, Combined Schools Committee is doing similar in terms of trying to get a, a committee established to have intake from community to do mm -hmm. all the development that's going to be necessary in the constitution. So. I won't say it's a backseat, I won't say we've been more quiet, but I think we've come to terms in some respects on some of the work that needs to happen immediately. Uh, there's been lots of talk for, like I said, the better part of a year, arguments, discussions, and so on. Action is needed now. So I think both parties are cognizant of that and, and are moving forward in a positive direction. Uh, it may come to a head again at, at some point in time, but at least some work is being done at this point. Mm -hmm. So I think we're understanding of each other in terms of where it needs to go and then it being the issue of education versus the personalities that have become involved. Right, and I mean uh, all personalities aside, I know that there is a constitutional review group that is, has already started. Um, where does, how is the Mohawk Council networking with this group and of course, um, on the Mohawk Council's end, there was a, a release sent out to the community that there was an action plan that was being put in place. So how does that coincide with what's already being done by this group? Well, unfortunately, it does kind of coincide. We'd like it to actually meld. There's a meeting being proposed and it's been put off for several reasons, most recently for March break, as we're in right now, mm -hmm. uh, for some of the committee members that are away with families and so on, uh, that have children in the schools. But when this meeting happens, we're hopeful that the working group on our side, the working group, if not the entire committee on their side, can come to terms on how these initiatives can meld. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we don't want to come up with two separate outcomes. Right. It needs to be in unison of what the community is looking for. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that's kind of gotten lost in the last little while. It's not what we want as MCK. It shouldn't be what combined school service uh, committees want. It's about what the community wants for the future of education. So we need to come up with a product at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. we know community is watching. Right. I mean, there's been a lot of um, back and forth and, and the, the side of the community really came out and that was vocal was, you know, remove Mohawk Council from education. And then you didn't really have, I mean, even though you had people saying that they wanted the Mohawk Council involved, they weren't as vocal. Now, you know, fast forward all these months later, it's been a year, over a year since it first started. And, you know, where, where are we in terms of getting some of these issues resolved? And I think that when, when the community as a whole looks at education, they look at that for sure and think, well, how far have we come? And is the Mohawk Council listening to the voices that seem to be stronger in terms of saying that they don't want the politicians involved in in working on this matter mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll be honest and say no 
Uh, I don't believe, and I think council doesn't believe, that because you speak the loudest that we need to listen. Uh, I think we're listening to the community in general. Uh, that's our responsibility. Uh, people have said, remove yourselves from the educational issue. I don't think the Mohawk Council of Ganawagi, as part of the governance role in the community, can ever completely remove itself from any issue, whether it be education or what have you. I believe we have a vested responsibility to assure education, for example, is the best, if not equal to what's out there. And I believe the people that are on the committee want the same thing. I think everyone in the community should want the same thing in terms of equal to or better than. So I can't see us removing ourselves. Yes, it had become contentious. Uh, right now it's a bit of a, a downtime or a quieter time, but the issues still exist. We're moving forward, I think, in a positive direction. They believe so too. Uh, we need to come back together again, like I said, very soon to see if something can be done because there had been a commitment way back when again to work together and that's still there. The mandate has never changed. Has there been, uh, on this matter, has there been a lot of talks between the liaisons from the Mohawk Council and the Combined School Committee at this point that you know of? I know that they've been to several meetings. They report back to the table. A lot of it's been through email because everybody is busy and mm -hmm. the people on the Combined are, uh, have jobs as well and everything happens after hours, so to speak. So there have been some, not as much as I think probably both parties would like. Um, I can't speak on behalf of Combined, but there has been some disconnect. Well, again, we're hoping to reconnect back next week. Okay. Now, in terms of the independent investigation, um, there was an announcement made last week that the process has been set. So what's happening with that and who's conducting the investigation? Uh, a, a body has been identified. Again, the name escapes me, but uh, we're also asking for involvement from community members because it needs to have a steering committee to assure that the outcome, obviously, which will become public to a degree, uh, needs to have support and understanding from community members to be able to show as much transparency as possible through the process. So that's where it's at right now, mm -hmm. but a group has been identified. So still in the early stages at yes. this point. Okay, so as I guess as time goes on in the next couple of months, we'll be hearing more about this. Um, okay, so before we go on to a lot more issues here on our town, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and be right back after this. And welcome back to the program. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Our Town. And today in studio with us, we have Grand Chief Mike DeLille, and we are discussing a number of political issues in and around Kahnawake. We just finished talking about education. We're going to move forward now into tobacco. Um, tobacco regulations, this is not something new. This has been an ongoing, and I see you nodding your head, but it's been an ongoing issue, right, for years and Decades. years and years. Now, um, I know that there was a release sent out last week by the Moa Council saying uh, that they were looking at legislation that had been created or is in development through the Conservative government. Here in Gahnawage, though, the need to regulate is it's necessary. Years old. Yeah, and it's necessary. People will say yes. Now, where are we with this file? And how come it's not going anywhere? <laughs> just, just some background information. Uh, I, I apologize for interrupting, but it's been frustrating. It's mm -hmm. been decades. Uh, I took on the file in 2004 uh, when I first became Grand Chief. It lasted about two and a half years between the discussions, meetings, mm -hmm. secretive and not, and draft regulation, and the, all the in well, and outs. There's been a number of drafts. Yeah, and... In 2006 and a half, uh, a working group took over from uh, the discussions. Um, it, it's definitely needed, uh, and I need to correct a few things or, uh, I guess, rumors that are out there. There is no legislation right now by the federal government. Okay. I, be I believe it will happen because they've been pushing things through uh, basically as they feel necessary, regardless of what the uh, outcries are from First Nations, Canadians in general, or their, uh, the opposition sitting in Parliament. Um, so it will happen, but it's not there yet. If there's and, no actual legislation, <clears throat> but there was talk in the House of Commons about 
this issue again in the Montreal Gazette had put out an article yeah. and of course again it focused on the native tobacco trade Absolutely. and how they're going to be cracking down on yeah. illegal the, and, and it's nothing new from mm -hmm. what's uh, been in the past because um, back in, when the conservatives first took over and um, the uh, federal government said we're again going to put a task force in place we're going to mm -hmm. crack down it's an issue cross border so on and so on and so on we had met then with um, uh, minister of justice um, stockwell day at the time and uh, went through that whole report i believe which came out uh, again in the spring it's always seems springtime when uh, these types of things arise uh, we had met with the task force and the working group we had met with uh, many of the communities uh, Mohawk communities that are dealing in, in uh, tobacco had a work plan going and it just fell apart. And I have to say, not based on lack of enthusiasm or effort from the federal government, more from the other First Nations that I had brought to the table. Mm -hmm. um, so again, part of the frustration. But this time the difference is that they're pushing for mandatory jail time. In the past, it's been heavy fines. We know a lot of people in the community have been incarcerated wrongfully for dealing in the tobacco trade and so on. This time, they're requesting mandatory jail time. And like I said, I believe it will happen because they've brought it forward. As you said, through the media now has gotten wind and it, it will move forward. I think it's in development stages now. So something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, we've started to have the discussions at the table. It was brought up this past Tuesday at the public meeting again. There is a need. There always has been a need, but there's lack of trust, uh, lack of positive momentum from every side, not just either the Mohawk Council or mm -hmm. traditional body or anybody involved in the industry. We've seen the turnover in, I'll call it, leadership in the tobacco industry with uh, KTA, Kanawagi Tobacco Association, so right. on and so on and so on throughout, again, the decades. Um, we have some ideas. Uh, we would like to bring them forward, not only to tobacco trade, because this affects the entire community. So we will be coming forward in a couple of weeks with these ideas, with these initiatives, and it does involve community decision-making process because we have it there. Uh, if you're going to base re regulation on anything, you need to base it in a law. Mm -hmm. And now I think it's urgent. We don't want to see, we never wanted to see any of our people incarcerated, go to jail, pay heavy fines, whatever it would be. Uh, I think the iron is hot right now. Something needs to happen if the community can be the catalyst in driving this forward if they want it. Maybe that's one way to look at it. Anyway, it wasn't my idea, but these are some of the ideas that were being talked about around the table because we do have several new chiefs who have become immersed in the file and want mm -hmm. to take their kick at the can, so to speak. Well, pretty much all four. You have Christine yes. Zagardion, Bobby Patton, Gina Deer, and Billy. Yes. We're all new and are dealing with this issue. I mean... But they have support. They have yeah. help. I mean, the drafts are there. We have technical people involved from the mm -hmm. Office of Council of Chiefs. Uh, they're tapping our brains, myself, Gus, other people who have worked on the file in the right. past. So they're not in isolation. But I think it needs fresh faces and ideas because, mm -hmm. it's, again, of that lack of trust. And it works always, not just in terms of trusting council. There's trust issues within the tobacco trade right. itself. We right. all understand that. Mm -hmm. So focus on the common enemy and do the right thing for survival. I think that's the message right now. What kind of reaction or feedback are you getting from the people that are involved in the, t the tobacco trade? The only interaction I've had personally is from uh, Tuesday night's community meeting and it's still debating the fact on who to trust. Mm -hmm. And Mohawk Council of Ganawagi has been removed since 2005 from any draft of a regulatory paper. Mm -hmm. it, it's been done. You know, we're eight years in now. Get over it and move forward. There's a tobacco, Ganawagi Tobacco Regulatory Board, body, commission, call it whatever you want, put whatever acronyms you need to put in there. Mm -hmm. It's not us. There needs to be a regulatory agency to assure People get the deliveries. People receive their product. It mm -hmm. can be marketable outside. You have access to market. So on and so on and so on. It's there. But if Ganawage does say, you know, there is this board, it's created, it's set forth, we, we create our own legislation, how will it be enforced? And how will outside governments, in your opinion, respond to us doing this? I, I think they'll respond positively mm -hmm. for... The majority of the issues with revenue agencies like Quebec or CCRA in Canada, it's about money and control. Mm -hmm. And for the tobacco industry, it's about money. 
and control. Right. It's neither of those for the Mohawk Council of Ganawage. It's for regulation and ensuring that the established trade has a solid foundation, which mm -hmm. I don't believe it's ever had. So through those types of things, I think it would be embraced externally. We're not talking how? about paying like, tax. A payoff or no, I don't. I don't <laughs> think that, we're talking about paying tax to dollars to it. the federal government because it's created these types of problems. It's created problems not only internally to the community. Mm -hmm. It's created problems for the governments because they have constituents to answer to too, and they have not been able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's created those types of problems for them. We had, like I said, draft regulations in umpteen forms in the last decade or so. We've had agreements with the province to try and deal with these types of things which have come under heavy scrutiny. And we've said publicly, I've said publicly, I've said it at public meetings, it's non-implementable, whether you're talking about petroleum, whether you're talking about uh, tobacco or alcohol. Right. So we're revisiting all of those types of things. Stop harping on that agreement because right. it's never been implemented. It's an open book, it's a blank page. Help us develop it is what the message has been since 2004. I think they made great strides in the last couple of years with Gus helping, being coming involved in the file. Mm -hmm. uh, several individuals in the tobacco trade itself, you know, helped a long way too. It's this getting over the lack of trust based on actions by the council, actions by individuals, things that people say, rumors on the street, Facebook out. It, I mean. It needs to happen for the survival of the industry. I think we're very close. I think we were very close nine years ago. Mm -hmm. If we want it to survive, positive action needs to be taken. Well, could, and, and I know in the press release that was sent out by the Moa Council, there was a mention of organized crime and how you know we want to stay away from that. Do you think that possibly because there were raids that were conducted here in the community that were linked to certain families and people that allowed outside forces to come into the community and conduct these raids with the help of the Gahnawage peacekeepers. Perhaps that was an issue for, for many people where they were like, well, they're turning us in. They're mm -hmm. allowing them to come in here. Is, is that specific to cigarettes or was that specific because some of these cases were linked to organized crime? Well, Otherwise, why make that statement? No, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, people can deny it all they want. I believe that the industry, not across the board, but the industry has been infiltrated probably for the better part of 20 years by people that should not be involved in our industry. Mm -hmm. Our people should be making the money. Our people should feel safe and comfortable in dealing within the industry. But I, I can't say factually, but the writing's on the wall. You know, people in our community, I see people in our community every day that I don't know who they are. People question us and say, how are so many people not from Ganawage in our community yeah. and involved in this industry when you know some of our people can't get jobs and so on and so on. So, I mean, like I said, I can't say factually because I don't know and I can't say this one, this one, or this one. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Okay. But I think regulation takes care of, if not all of it, a vast majority of it, because if you have a regulated industry and you have a board, a body, somebody to enforce, like you said, you have somebody to answer to as well as to the community, it'll take care of a lot of that. And I think people are afraid of it. Okay, but we will be hearing something as a community in the coming months, you Absolutely. said, in terms of things coming to some sort we need, of We need to take fruition. positive action because I believe this conservative, and I still call them reformers, this reform government will pass the legislation eventually. Yes, of course, and then they would love to. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. When you come back, more here on Our Town with the Grand Chief. Don't go away. And welcome back to the program. We're in studio with Grand Chief Mike DeLille of the Moha Council of Gahnawage and discussing various political issues in and around our community. We've covered education and tobacco and we're going to be moving on to membership, the community decision making process. But before we get that to that, excuse me, we're going to talk, talk about gas tax. Now, of course, you know, in the media lately, there's been uh, a lot of coverage surrounding the, the class action suit that was filed. Um, by several community members here in Ganawage and of, was strange to some people was the Mohawk Council of Ganawage wasn't involved in such a large case concerning some of the issues, the political issues that surround Ganawage in terms of jurisdiction and permits and things like that. Um, 
bring us up to speed, if you will, of in where the Mohawk Council is at at this point, because I know that there was a community meeting that had happened where there was an alleged gag order that was placed on Mohawk Council that, that you guys felt you couldn't speak about at the time, but now we're clear, it's all clear that that doesn't exist. So can we talk a little bit about this issue, please? Yes. <laughs> uh, just to, again, clarify, it's not a gag order. Right. We did receive a lawyer's letter from the same lawyer who's conducting the case on behalf of the uh, gas retailers in our community against the province of Quebec mm -hmm. for collecting taxes, telling right. us to cease and desist from any negative or defamatory or wrong information and making okay. statements to that effect mm -hmm. to the community, uh, according to them. We've obviously responded to them, uh, stating that Anything we normally say on behalf of chief and council is factual as, much, as far as we understand. We're, we're not trying to, I guess, take away any of the credibility of certain of the individuals okay. there, but they felt that this was necessary. So we have answered that. So it's not a gag order per mm -hmm. se, as has been described earlier. <laughs> earlier I was, on. I wasn't at the public meeting uh, last month, the mm -hmm. one you described, but I understand it became very heated and mm -hmm. volatile and for whatever issues uh, needed to be addressed. But um, moving forward, uh, the other question saying from the community, why weren't we involved? Mm -hmm. A couple of reasons. Uh, one, they didn't want us to be involved because when we had met at least twice uh, previous to the actual um, court case itself, when they were leading up to it, we felt, and I had brought it to council because I was approached by one of the individuals that's involved saying, you know, Mike, what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. what is this about? And I'm not really understanding. I've only been involved in the industry for a little while. Well, why is this happening? So I was going through some explanation and then attending some meetings that had been set up uh, saying, well, we may intervene because of the political nature of it, because of the issues related to gas tax. And we've been in this issue since 1999 right. and before, really, but mm -hmm. uh, with the agreement since 1999 with the province and so on. Uh, and we were pretty much told, um, no, stay out of our business. We don't want you to intervene. So the criticism why we were not involved, that's half of the story. The other half of the story is that because they told us not to be involved is not the reason why we didn't. We didn't feel that the argument was the one to be making, especially at a provincial level. Um, they are now appealing uh, the decision, they've already said, when it comes down sometime this summer uh, and going to Supreme Court of Canada, which may be the indication in terms of timing when we would need to become involved because if collective rights are going to be affected, then we have an obligation. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason, that's the other half of the reason why we didn't become involved. There's still an opportunity here. Uh, no decision has been rendered. We don't believe Aboriginal right to any degree should be fought in a court of law, let alone a provincial court, which really has no jurisdiction. Um, Quebec put up some invalid arguments in our opinion, and, and we're moving forward with that, with the province to question those types of things. We've received some of the transcripts. So that's the reasons why we did not become involved. One, because they said, no, we don't want you to be. And the second one was, is that we need to know when to pick the fight. And, and this wasn't the one. So mm -hmm. there may be a time in the future We've saved the community a lot of money in terms of becoming uh, intertwined in this right now, but it, it may be necessary in the future. Do you think the, the actions taken by these individuals jeopardized the rights of the, the collective? Right now, we don't think so, and that's okay. the reason why we didn't become involved in, uh, initially. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it would have been from the outside looking in, we wouldn't mm -hmm. have been going against the province of Quebec hand in hand because there's disagreement in terms of what the arguments are. They're saying that they shouldn't be collecting taxes, yet their permit, which they've signed, I believe, says that. So mm -hmm. there's principal disagreements on how we should move forward against it. Should we be tax collectors? No. It's, it's a principle. Should Mohawk people in the community pay taxes? No. Whether it be mm -hmm. on gas or you name it. But the real argument is, should that benefit be passed on to non-Native people? which is really Revenue Quebec's argument. So mm -hmm. it's a big ball of wax. It's been the argument, the, he, the, the, the main part of the argument since 1999 when this came forward. Quebec has tried several times to implement different types of systems to do this. And we were in unison with all of the gas retailers, not just the ones that went forward in this uh, suit, as you said, uh, against the province when last year Quebec said, this is how we're implementing it. 
and it was too cumbersome for our community members. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense logistically for all of the information that needed to be provided, as well as the added burden to some of the gas retailers to, to do this. Mm -hmm. So we told Quebec, no, we don't agree with how you're looking to implement this thing. And there's been very little discussion on our part with the province to date because there are other outstanding issues that we've put at the forefront versus this. So there's still lots of time. We're not dealing with Quebec in the back room, so to speak. We're not trying to cut a different type of deal. We've told the gas retailers politely and sometimes not as politely at public forums to say, you know, we're doing what we believe is necessary. And I guess they don't believe us. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, when you look at the the issue of taxation as a whole in Gahnawage, and should non-natives have that right to come here and purchase products that are non-taxed, when you look at economic development in the community, what is the attraction rather, you know, other than being able to purchase things at a lower price or in a tax-free environment? So that's a huge argument in terms of sustaining other economy in the community rather than just working for an organization or you have small businesses, gas, uh, cigarettes, um, the, the gambling trade, if you will. Uh, is it all these things taxable? Are they not taxable? I mean, a lot of the people who are coming into Gahnawage, re regardless of, of who they are, you know, mm -hmm. they're not from here. What is going to be the attraction other than being able to purchase things at a lower price mm -hmm. or not get taxed? So how do you get around that? Do you have right now? We do have pumps for Gahnawage Dono, and that should tell you something. <laughs> you know, so. and, and, and my only answer right now is I agree. Mm -hmm. I understand the attraction. I think there still can be attraction in terms of uh, what they decry as price parity, and there will always be a difference in terms of on reserve, off reserve, and not only about tax. And I don't think gas and or tobacco or small business by no. any means no, but but, but you know. the argument becomes how far do you go before it jeopardizes collective right and with this reform mm -hmm. government doing what they're doing basically carte blanche in terms of alienating the rights and withdrawing them and trying to amend indian act to eventually say you're no longer indian because you've mm -hmm. kind of taken them away yourself that becomes the argument so I understand the economic issues around it, but at the end of the day, whose rights are they? And if mm -hmm. these things jeopardize them collectively, somebody needs to say and do something about it. Okay. Don't go away. We're going to be right back after another commercial break. You're watching Our Town. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the program. We are discussing various issues here in Gahnawage, politically, of course, and we have Grand Chief Mike DeLille in studio with us today here at Mohawk TV. Now, some of the other issues that are making headlines in the media and, of course, out in the community, our membership is going through the community decision-making process right now. Um, but when you look at some of the involvement in people coming out to take part, it's a little bit on the low side. Why do you think that is and where does this issue stand right now? I, I think that's an understatement when you say <laughs> a little bit on the low side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have an answer. I, I've talked to the community about complacency before, you know, in, since 2004. Uh, I don't know if membership is not sexy or attractive enough. I mean, it's at the root of every person's identity and it's the number one rights issue in the community, uh, beneficiary wise and otherwise, I, I can't give you an answer as to why other than complacency. Um, There's been a low turnout for jurisdiction everything. and everything. Justice like Act, you know, so Things on. that I, are really going to impact this yes, community. And, and it's disappointing for me because it's been asked. That's why we, from 2004 when I took over to 2007 when it finally got a little bit of meat to it and mm -hmm. implemented in 08, people have asked to be involved in community decisions. People have been asked, why don't laws have effect in the community? And for the 12 of us to pass them, the way we, this council and past council, well not this council, but past councils have, you know, and I'm not criticizing it, the way it was done without having teeth through our court system, why are we going to continue to do it that way? So right. we've tried to bring it back forward, have a public legislature, if you will, and, and have people come out. I don't know. Is it a lack of trust? Is it a lack of 
ability well, some people a, will say well it's a lack of recognition towards this foreign government the Mohawk council well i i can appreciate that to a degree but where do we go if we don't do this um we, we've said uh, going a little bit off track for membership but just mm -hmm. on the um Kahnawake legislative coordinating commission the Justice Act. I mean, it's getting closer. It's very close, actually, and I think it's a good document. It's a basis of what the jurisdiction should look like in Ganawage. Mm -hmm. Yes, with not as much participation, not even close to what I would have hoped to become right. involved in something like this, but the, the JPs are retiring. The, they're not reappointing. We're up against the wall versus this reform government. What are we going to do in otherwise? I mean, falling back on what some are saying, you know, should be the position, you know, the Mohawk nation and tradition and so on. I agree, but if it's not recognized out there, where do we stand? Nothing else will happen. Mm -hmm. So something in terms of, I don't want to say playing in their ball game or they need to see something today from the community to say, yes, this is what they've done, the will of the people, so to speak. And it's hard now internally when we look and we have 15, 20, 30 people involved in something as huge, like you said, in turn, future development of this community and legislation mm -hmm. being involved. It's very difficult and I'm disappointed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see different levels of attention, if you will, given to such issues like education. Um, I know one of the things that attracted a lot of attention was the, the um, uh, sorry, the arena asking if there should be a bar in there or not. And that was like... Correction. You know? They never asked if there should be a well, bar. Well, a survey that was conducted Not to have a bar, but to serve to alcohol. To serve alcohol. At okay, special yes. events. Correction. Yes. <laughs> Thank the you. The council was never mm -hmm. in agreement because mm -hmm. Sports and Recreation Unit is still a part of the Mohawk Council under the umbrella. Yes. They came forward and mm -hmm. we never discussed reopening the bar. Not the bar, but allowing alcohol to be served at, at the arena events. during special events. Yes. Now, the, the survey's been done. Has yes. it been presented to council? No. It hasn't yet. No. Okay, I was going to try and get you no, it <laughs> discuss it. Okay, but that garnered a lot of, you know, attention. And so when you look at the, the level of what gets attention versus some of, not to say that it's not a serious issue. It nope. just, it is very... Um, community. Yes, and, you know, and, it, and it just makes you wonder where people's priorities are in terms of what's important to them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just looking at some of these issues like membership is, is, is it in the final stages at this point? I know the, that it's gone the, through... The, the next hearing is the 21st, okay. I believe, stand to be corrected, but I believe it's the 21st. And they're very close to having an agreement mm -hmm. to move forward on that one aspect, but it right. doesn't mean it's over. Okay. There are a lot of amendment possibilities that will be brought forward. I mean, the whole plan was outlined to the community before the holidays on how this would move forward. Mm -hmm. So we're still at the beginning stages here, but we're getting close to an agreement on one aspect of it. So, mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right. I mean, and, and they're all important. How much information do we feed? Wait till we start going into real consultation in the community on the scenery of Sault Ste. Louis, you know, mm -hmm. the largest thing that this community maybe ever, mm -hmm. other than the imposition of the St. Lawrence Seaway and the Mercy Bridge and so on, but something that can be positive for us, how much information can the community take, you know, has been right. a question too, but we're being faced with this today. We don't yeah. have time. We don't have the luxury of sitting back going, well, you know, maybe next year we'll be able to. These things are coming at us and we need to react. We need to do something. Matrimonial real property. Mm -hmm. very controversial, yeah. I believe, which will be very detrimental to the community. We're getting close to them saying it's the law and we have a year to be able to pass something. Mm -hmm. We've been criticized for saying, well, now look, because of that, you're going to omnibus all these things like the federal government does. We're not Harper's government. I'm not a puppet of Stephen Harper. We're, mm -hmm. we're not doing, we're trying to do things to protect the community in light of what they're doing in Ottawa. And in some cases, Quebec as well, but mostly Ottawa. So. That's why we put these mechanisms in place. If the community agrees and says, yes, this is what we want to happen, because it doesn't happen at community meetings. We haven't made decisions there for over 10 years because, I mean, I'm sorry, but mob shouldn't rule. We need consensus and agreement on serious issues. How is it that, if at all, is the Mohawk Council um, conducting not just through the community decision-making process, but you have a large majority, uh, a large body of traditional people here in Gahnawage. What is the outreach? Is it 
Has there been any? Is both sides or well, is there just no conversation at all? Well, no, they, they've made, you know, statements and made uh, press, have press releases put out saying don't become involved. Don't immerse yourself in the process. Don't right. engage in this because it's not our way, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all the same people here. We're all, I think, believing and fighting for the same thing. But if we continue to fight each other, the enemy wins. I mean, it's been divide and conquer since first contact. It's never changed for them. And mm -hmm. now I think because this blue government in Ottawa has its foothold and stranglehold on what it wants to do, we need to be careful and we need to be vigilant and move. People will say, you're moving too fast. You're giving us too much information. We don't trust you. We, we, don't, have the, we don't have the luxury of time. And people say, well, why didn't you do anything before? Government came in in 2006, which people will say, well, that's a long time ago. Yeah, agreed. But they only become a majority and really pushed in the last couple of years. And I'm sorry, but people who say, you've never given us the information. You've never talked about this publicly. You never, that's not true. We've done all of those types of things. Matrimonial real property, which is now interests and has a bill number, which is going to move forward. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about to the community for at least five years. Yes. It's nothing new. And now because we want to implement an urgent lawmaking process because of this, well, now you're moving things forward anyway without community consultation. Not at all. Community still needs to be involved. We're just trying to shorten the time process to assure we beat the feds at their game. Mm -hmm. That's all. So I don't see how people are saying we're the arm of the federal government. We would just sit back and do nothing then and allow matrimonial interest law to become law and to be subservient to well, it. I don't Absolutely think that there's, not. There's any, you know, uh, saying that that these things aren't happening on the outside. You can see how the omnibus bill definitely impacted us and how all of a sudden one day it was there and the next, you know, one day it wasn't and then it was there. So you do see how quickly they can move things through Parliament and through those avenues. Um, and it's concerning. Yes, it is concerning. Um, we're going to wrap things up, but before we go, I, I, I wanted to touch just quickly on some of the complaints and about the code of conduct at the Mohawk Council. Of course, you know, Facebook is always a very big social media in a small community and throughout the world. But here it's impacted us in terms of how, you know, it being another avenue to express oneself or get information out, if you will. And I know that recently there's been some criticism towards the Mohawk Council chiefs, especially with what they're doing on Facebook and how they're conducting themselves. Now, there was a complaint that was sent to the Mohawk Council regarding comments or likes on a Facebook page that was uh, regarding education. As the Grand Chief and someone who is, you know, sits at the head of that table, how would you expect your council to conduct themselves when they're not on the job, if you will? Because sometimes people consider that you guys are on the job 24-7. Well, I believe in terms of representation, regardless of what form you're in, you are representing the position you have. It's mm -hmm. a responsible position. So I would expect that whether you're sitting at the table whether you're sitting in your office, whether you're at home on your computer, across the board. Mm -hmm. um, my position on Facebook, I think, is widely known and spread within this community. I've never been and I don't think ever will be a proponent of it because I think it does more damage than good in my community. What it does in the world, uh, I'm not in control of that. I'm not in control of it in the community either, but um, I'm a big proponent of freedom of speech. I think people have a right to their opinion whether it be right or wrong. I mean, there's this old saying that goes, everybody has one and uh, mm -hmm. it ties to another part of the body, but everybody has a right to do that. But for a elected, whether it's a council member, whether it's an external politician, you're always held to a higher standard. Of course. Uh, uh, John D. Delormier was held to that standard previously when he was on council and he paid for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying in terms of money or what you're have just, you. You're but talking about the issue, the Facebook, the Facebook the and Facebook, the pictures. Absolutely. And, yeah, and, and in yeah. other public forums as well. Mm -hmm. So because you're a publicly elected official, you're a representative of the community, whether some don't agree with it or not, it is what it is. So you're going to be held to that standard and it's higher than the average individual. Not mm -hmm. to put you on the pedestal, 
it's actually no, the opposite. It is, it's, it's actually, actually the, the opposite. truth, yes. You, you need to understand and be cognizant of what you're saying because people will call you on it. Mm -hmm. My, I guess, theory and or mantra to the table is don't engage. I don't. I choose not to. People mm -hmm. forward me stuff all the time. I mean, I'm constantly connected through BlackBerry. Uh, right. I don't have Facebook. I don't have Twitter. I don't do any of those types of things. And people forward me the stuff. But why should I react? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have many public forums, including this one, uh, kiosks, public meetings, uh, KTV, I'm accessible. Right. You have something to say. You know where I live? My number is publicly in the phone book. Mm -hmm. All of my contact information is published on the Mohawk Council website. You know where I work. I'm a member of this community. Why do you need to do that mm -hmm. versus come and talk to me about facts and realities? Mm -hmm. So, again, my indication to the table is why do you engage? Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing some of the problems that it can create. I, you know, and I totally understand that as community members and chiefs here in the community that, you know, everybody has feelings and everybody is, you know, susceptible to, to criticism and also feeling hurt by that. Um, however, I think you're right when you engage and there was something that I had wrote on my Facebook maybe about two weeks ago after I heard about the complaint letter and then I seen for myself some of the reaction by some of the chiefs on council and I, and, and I said to myself, you know, I understand even when you're disappointed, but I think that some of the reaction was uncalled for and it was just unprofessional. So I'm glad that you're saying, why are you engaging? It's not the right forum. And especially when, you have, when you're supposed to represent everybody in the community, even if they don't fall under believing in your government. So to take one side or the other, I think is not right. Um, but there was a lot of issues surrounding this. And of course, it's ongoing. Um, how has Mohawk Council dealt with this complaint at this point? I mean, this is just one out of that came in officially, but yeah. how are you guys dealing well, with this? Like every other one, uh, it goes through process. Um, we are taking it seriously. Um, it's in process now. We're mm -hmm. dealing with it there will be an outcome at the end of the day. Anyone right. in the community who brings in a serious complaint, it is handled exactly that way, seriously, and there is a prescribed process. Legal is involved, and we move forward. That's okay. where it's at. Uh, the complaint against Carl Horn, now the, there was a vote of non-confidence put to, uh, towards him. Where do we stand with that? Because we haven't actually heard anything as a community. The report came in within the prescribed time frame of 30 days. We'll be meeting very shortly to discuss it with the investigator. And again, the community will be advised of the outcome. Okay. Anything else you feel is important to add? I know we could sit here for an hour, but of course we don't have that luxury. Everybody's busy these days, but anything you feel is important to add? There's a project that I've been working on for the better part of uh, many years, uh, mostly in my head and in speaking with council members and other bodies in the community. And it's about uh, the social fabric in the community. I held a session, if you will, a meeting back in the spring of 2006 with as many stakeholders as I could at the Peacekeeper Station talking about what's wrong with our community. And there's a lot of good things in our community and we have a beautiful, vibrant community, mm -hmm. but there are issues, there are problems. And I think a lot of them stem from social issues and everybody decries drugs and alcohol, but there's many others. Um, I've taken the step this past October to become the Mohawk Council of Ganawagi representative on social services board of directors. Mm -hmm. We're going through governance training, which oh, yes, is an okay. eye opener for a lot this. of okay. people. It's a very new board. There's only one member who's been there for a very long time. The rest is of us are. Warren? No. no. Uh, well, he's one of them. He's, he's been there for a long time. There's somebody actually who has a longer, longer. tenure than him. <laughs> but <clears throat> um, we're dealing with some of the governance issues that mm -hmm. need to be dealt with there. And it's a good thing. Um, Derek Montour presented this past Tuesday night at the I community heard, meeting yes. from Community Service as the executive director. It's something I've been talking about at the council table and as well to other directors whenever I have the chance, executive directors, because I feel they have a responsibility to the community as well as chief and council does. So yes. we're starting to try to make these town hall meetings what they really should be not just back and forth between the question and answers mm -hmm. of community and the barber thrown at council. We're big boys, we can take it, but really provide a forum to give information and get feedback from these institutions. And where I'm going with all of this is we've now developed a, what I call a social policy in the community. It has a much longer name than that, but it's about 
self-reliance and trying to deal with some of these issues that have become extremely problematic in their community a various range of community issues mm -hmm. single parenting uh, I, I can get into like you said an hour right. but it's happening now we're going to be launching and I don't have a date because we want to do it right we're not about timing a summit it won't be public initially but mm -hmm. a summit on social policy issues mm -hmm. involving all of the stakeholders in terms of institutions in the community right now we have a steering group involving people from education from David and Izakta economic development Commission, uh, Community Services, Mohawk Council of Ganawage, mm -hmm. and a facilitator to help us bring us to this summit. And when right. it happens, I think it's the beginning of something very good for the community. It's going to be a long process. It's taken us decades to get to where we are. Mm -hmm. I don't have the magic wand. Nobody within that room has the magic wand. But I think if we continue to work together and allow not allow people to fall through the cracks which has been part of the problem in the past and fighting amongst each other to say who's my client it's covered by confidentiality we can't share information right. get rid of that and put everybody on the table at the same playing level playing field and say this is what needs to happen for Ganawage it's going to go a long way so mm -hmm. more to come for sure but um, that's what I'm looking forward to, at least for this term. Well, it sounds like a great project. And I, I know, I understand where you're coming from. I think a lot of people could relate to that in terms of executive directors or the higher held jobs or positions here in the community and the accountability to that. And I understand that Derek's, um, his presentation was very interesting and he had talked about something along the lines of there being 60 something cases in terms of addictions already this year and mm -hmm. some of them dating back, um, um, not dating back, some of them relating as far back in terms of age to six years old. And it, I mean, it just blew my mind in terms of where we're at as mm -hmm. a community. We have uh, so and, much to deal with. And I think if you look at social ills, it's everywhere. Yeah. But we can control it in our community. We're small enough. We have enough resources. information yes. and resources to be able to combat it. Yeah. We have to break barriers down. That's what this project will do. Well, good luck, and we're you know, looking forward to hearing more on that. So thank you once again for coming in. Thank you. And uh, it was a very informative show as usual. If you have any comments or feedback, don't hesitate to send us an email at mohawktv at hotmail.com. We hope you enjoyed the program. We're going to be coming back full on with our town in studio and in and around Gahnawage. So stay tuned here to Mohawk TV on Channel 4. Or you can visit us on Mohawk TV at no, www.mohawktv.ca. I'm your host, Regan Jacobs, and thank you for staying with us. Anna. Kanya ke haga thadi adrast kayer ni ga hiado zewa de roro.